Well, hey, thanks for having me today. I'm really, really excited to hopefully uh, can share some insights that become actionable and can help people who are tuning in. Um, local marketing is kind of just sort of what you wrapped up there. Um, it, it is marketing to an audience that is near your doorstep, right? So you're right. It's not e-commerce. It's not big box marketing. It's, it's you know, storefronts. And, and that doesn't necessarily have to be just, you know, like a, a local mom and pop shop. Like even the McDonald's near you has a local audience, right? And so every business that has a door in a neighborhood has to think about local marketing. And, you know, whether that's coming down from a top brand perspective or, you know, even just a level of customer service once somebody walks through the door. So, you know, to me, local marketing is sort of everything that uh, encompasses how you market to promote and sell to an audience that's within a certain geographic around your business. Yeah. And Anita, I want to turn to you. I will give Rev a chance to talk first, but I mean, I'd love to know what's changed. Rev, I'll turn to you first. Can you help us understand this aspect of what's changed? And then I want to dive into your tips and, and tactics and talk more about Rev and what you do. But let's help people understand, you know, I don't know, local marketing 10 years ago, 15 years ago. I doubt George Washington did local marketing, so we'll skip going that far back. But local marketing years ago, however you define that, what was it like then? Walk us through briefly what's it like today, and then Anita, I'd love to have you, you know, enter in here and help us understand what you're seeing in the small business trends audience and from your own expertise. But Rev, first to you, help us understand how this has evolved and shifted so we really are clear what we're going to be talking about today. Sure. So there's really one big change in terms of lo local marketing today and 10, you know, 15 years ago. It's the internet, right? And that's a really catch-all world we're talking about social media and pay-per-click advertising and Facebook and, you know, YouTube and all the other ways in which people can interact with a brand now, you know, in, in the, the old days, uh, you know, you could place a newspaper ad or, you know, you put three A's in front of your name and come up first in the phone <laughs> book. Yes. AAA one, 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 one dry cleaning. Um, th those sort of hacks, if you will, that, that was what it looked like 10, 15 years ago. And, you know, maybe there was an advertisement in your local paper or something, and, you know, with the advent of the internet, um, how people are discovering a business is completely different, you know, whereas advertising and word of mouth were really kind of your only two avenues, you know, many years ago, you know, now you have all these other ways in which somebody can find a path to your business. And so, you know, businesses that, you know, living online is not just enough anymore. It's actually about being active online and understanding, you know, what is a customer's path to find you. Can, can Yex makes a shirt with that that says living on, uh, what is it? Living online is not enough anymore, but being, but being active. I think <laughs> yeah, being online is, is not enough anymore. Act, being active online is important. Anita, talk to us. What are you seeing in your world? And I know you're an expert in a lot of these things as well. You're a marketer for sure, but help us understand what you're seeing in this evolution change from, you know, what we've done in the past to now what we need to know uh, to, regarding local marketing and local search. So it really mirrors what, uh, Rev is saying there, because the issue that our audience is telling us about is everything is so complicated. People don't know where to start. They don't know through all the noise, do I need to take care of this or should I focus on that? Uh, and when you're a local business, you have, you know, I think a, a unique set of marketing challenges, different from a business that maybe reaches out without regard to geography or the online business. And, and so when you're a local business, you know, you're trying really hard to get that foot traffic in, in the door. I know, you know, one of the things that uh, gets searched a lot on our site is, you know, how to get foot traffic, how to get traffic into my business. So people are really looking for the answers. How do I go online? How do I leverage that to get people in my store or whatever it is? And, you know, and I, I think that that's, you know, a big challenge today because you really have to be part marketer and you have to be part technologist. You have to know some technology. You have to know what tools to use. Like the Yext, um, you know, I know Yext has a business listings tool and you really need to know like, when do I need a tool? What can it do for me? Which tool do I pick if there are other, you know, multiple tools out there? And I think that that's just a real challenge. And the challenge, I mean, Nita, you're right, it expands because when you take a look at the average small business, there's no average, but for sake of this conversation, average, we're not marketers, we're not technologists, we're trying to make our water bottle from manufacturing or cook our chicken, as I talked beforehand, so we're not experts in this, you know, most the average small business, so you're right, Anita, this is a challenge. 
Um, uh, Rev, why don't you dive into a bit before we get into your practical tips and very tactical and practical, tell us a little bit about uh, Yext, what it does, why it's important, and uh, then I'd love to know who you are a bit. I mean, you seem like a very interesting, cool guy. So briefly, tell us about Yext and what you do. Anita alluded to some of the services, and then tell us about yourself. I mean, for me, I'll just start real quick. I love pancakes, bacon, and eggs on Saturday morning. Uh, Anita, anything you want to just shout out about Anita that we need to know? Oh, I love the garden and I love the internet. Okay. So, Rev, the floor is yours. You can talk a bit longer than we did, but tell us a little bit about uh, the yourself. Uh, I love hamburgers. Um, I love venison. Uh, I love being a dad and a husband, <laughs> but we'll, we'll save that for a different webinar. Uh, so let's talk about Yex real quick. Yes. So what I think a lot of local businesses kind of don't understand is how the internet works in, in, in a generalized fashion. Um, but just to throw out a stat. So on average, people are three times more likely to find out a business on Yelp, Facebook, Google My Business, Bing, Yahoo, Foursquare, one of these other publisher sites and then decide to patronize that business without ever going to their website, right? And if you're in hospitality, if you're a restaurant, it's actually 10 times, right? So somebody might go to your Yelp page for you know, your retail shop or your dry cleaner, or your golf course, whatever it is, and decide they have all the information they need that makes a decision, and then they never get to your website, right? And so in, in terms of, of people, a lot of small businesses don't realize that that's the problem, right? The, the path to purchase is through these other networks, and they might own or control one or two pages on them, right? But there are literally hundreds of these across the internet. And there's a lot of ones that are vertical specific. So like if you're in hospitality, you know, Yelp or Open Table or TripAdvisor. And then if you're in, in you know, if you have a medical practice, there's wellness.com and, and all those ones, right? So they have these vertical specific publisher networks. But if you're not managing your data on those, you are almost disconnecting the path to purchase, right? So Yext is a tool that small businesses can use to basically put in all the facts about their brand, we call it digital knowledge, and then publish through all those websites and like literally the click of a button. So name, address, phone number, um, specifics about your business, what are the services you offer, what credit cards do you have, you know, gluten-free options, handicapped bathrooms, like all that kind of stuff that people are searching, you know, your hours. You put all of that into the EX dashboard, you literally push a button, and then we publish that across all of the, the publishers that we work with. There's about 84, depending on vertical. And then that information goes there and it stays there. And nobody can change it but you or whoever is running your dashboard. Uh, and so it's a real quick and easy way to make sure that the path to purchase for your uh, potential customers is basically guaranteed to be correct. And I like that thing you mentioned, Rev, about path to purchase. I'm going to ask you a political question, Rev, and then, Anita, I'd love for you to answer this. Don't be biased by Rev's answer, Anita. Um, here's the political question, Rev. Are you ready for the political question? Yes, I voted for Clinton both times. Well, I didn't ask that, but thank you. <laughs> My question is, are websites still relevant? I want to move more into search, but you piqued my interest. I'm curious, for local businesses who want local traffic, do you think having a website is essential today, or is it optional? And Anita, I'd love your insight on that because you know you mentioned uh, path to purchase and people are going on their phones and coming to your business, maybe not going to your website. So what do you say on that, Rev? What's your advice for us? I'll tell you why I love that question because that's the question that most small business owners ask. Um, and I have the answer, so I'm happy to share it. Um, yes, it's super important to have a website because if somebody does go to one of those publisher networks and decides to go over to your website, they need an experience. They need to know what the experience is, right? Maybe there's deeper facts, like maybe just because you have gluten-free options or, you know, handicap parking, like that's good enough to get them interested, but then they need to know more stuff. So yeah, it's super important to have a website, but I would say it's more important to manage your listing. So if you're going to go, what do I do today? manage your listings and then build that website, right? The other thing too is building a website can take, you know, weeks, months, a year, depending on how you're doing it and how good it looks and whatever is important to your brand, right? But you could, you could with the right tools, manage your listings in 72 hours, right? And so, yeah, it's super important, but you can still conduct some business without one and you can start that path to purchase without one. So I would say, yeah, it's important, um, but it is not the single source of truth like it used to be, you know, uh, even five, 10 years ago. Got it. And Anita Campbell, small business trends, drum rolls happening. The political question, what is your answer to, to what is your, what are your thoughts on this aspect, website or not? 
So I agree completely with what uh, Rev said. So plus one to what Rev said, or thumbs up, or you know, um, I would just add that uh, website also is really important to existing customers. So think beyond just getting your customer. Now, how do you service that customer? And your website becomes really, really important for that. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So Rev, let's get back into the business now. Let's go back, dive deep into local in the few minutes we have remaining. And we have some time. And again, I think Anita, you had said you want people to submit the questions and et cetera. I don't see them there, but feel free to jump in. If you have something pertinent, just, you know, say, Hey, Ramon, pause on that. And we have a question from Mary in Indiana or something. So, um, so Rev, let's talk about um, the aspect of what people can do. Some of the basics most common things you're telling people to do regarding local. I'm your accountant, your massage therapist, whoever I am in my local New York and Seattle, Alaska. What are some of the top things you're seeing, Rev, that I have to do for search? What are, what are those things that you want us to know? I am going to sound like a broken record. That's okay. <laughs> and, but the point is, is like, it doesn't matter how much you beat it, the horse is not dead. You have to manage your listings. And so I'm gonna give you, I'm actually gonna give you an example of that, right? Please. So most small business owners are aware of social media tools like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, you know, what Yelp, Pinterest, whatever they're using that's relevant to their business. And they're probably spending minutes, hours, days working on those, right? And so I say to a, a, somebody who owns a small business, like, hey, did you update your Twitter today? Yeah, okay, how long did that take you? You know, 15 minutes, blah, blah, blah. Cool, do you know what the half-life of a tweet is? Do either of you know? I the number, but I know it's short. Seven <laughs> minutes. Seven minutes. Seven minutes after you post the tweet, nobody sees it again ever. Well, my, right? my tweets, Rev, are seven and a half minutes. Anita's are seven or are eight minutes. So we're special. <laughs> Ours are seven and a half. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to thank Anita for bringing the curve up for everybody. Thank you. Uh, mine, I think, are only two, so I'm bringing it way down. Uh, Go ahead, Rev. Go ahead. <laughs> But the half, so great, but the half-life post of, of Facebook, right? Because some businesses are like, oh, Twitter's not important to me, and I get that, but Facebook is, right? The half-life of a Facebook post is five hours. So again, you put it up, and five hours later, nobody's ever gonna see it again, right? But you know what's forever? Ratings and reviews, right? You know what's not going away? Search, right? And so when, when a small business owner says to me, like, oh, you know, we spend all this money and time on, you know, Facebook and Twitter and, and Instagram and all that, and I go, are you managing your ratings and reviews? Is your digital knowledge correct? And they go, no, but we're so busy doing this other stuff. I'm like, cool. Well, it's sort of like, you know, spraying perfume into the wind. Nobody's going to smell it. If your information is not correct and people can't find you, it doesn't matter how much you tweet. It doesn't matter how much you post on Facebook. It doesn't matter what pictures you put up on Yelp. If you are not managing that information, right. And you're not responding to ratings and reviews, you are, missing out on potentially two thirds of your own audience. Got it. Anita, I want to turn to you about reviews and then we'll turn to Rev, we'll mix it up here. But just to repeat what I'm hearing, Rev, uh, the top three things I'm hearing you, you're saying not to not do it. You're saying be on social. That's one. Every business should do that. If, if I'm wrong, Rev, let me know. That's what I'm hearing you say, be on social. Point two, I'm hearing you say manage your listings. And again, Yex has a tool that could do that. But beyond Yex, you're saying go to the top listings, whatever they are, make sure they're correct, hours and location and all those cool things. And then three, I'm hearing you saying your reviews and ratings. So I guess, and Rev will talk about this, get them and post them and et cetera. In, in, in a short, that I summarize the kind of the top three things that one yeah, might- if we're, if we're gonna put them in order, social is last. Fine. Right, so to me, social, social is a customer service tool and a way to brand yourself to either customers who discover you or to your current customers, right? But it is not a tool that will uh, incite discovery. Sure. Right? It, it's all these other things that bring discovery, right? I'll, I'll, I'll give a quick story. I, people kind of know me for being like a food Instagrammer. Um, I got invited to this restaurant in New York City a while ago and there was like 15 other of us and they, you know, it was a nine course meal and all these drinks and they were expecting us to you know, like take photos, share it on social, Right. And then, you know, we have thousands of followers and yada, yada. Right. Well, I actually did a location search like best cocktail bar near me because that was their thing. And my phone, like it knows I'm in that cocktail bar and nothing came up, not in the top three, not in the top 20, not no knowledge card, nothing. Right. And I went and looked at their digital knowledge and they were like 97 percent inaccurate. So in, in fact, they spent about $3,000 on this dinner, right? In the hopes that like I would tell my 30 some thousand followers, hey, go eat the dumplings here, they're great. Um, but if somebody sees that and then flips over to search and goes, you know, oh, what was that cocktail bar in Tribeca? Like, it was a waste of money. Like it was a total waste of money. Whereas they could have fixed their, they could have started by fixing their listings for 
you know, 10, 20 bucks a week, you know? So yeah, long winded way to say listings first. <laughs> no, powerful. That's another t-shirt. Remember these Anita, I expect to get a box. <laughs> listings first. So Anita, just cause I know small business trends writes about these things all the time. Let's talk about reviews. I'm curious. It's, it's a personal interest of mine. And then ref, I'd love to hear your insight, but, but Anita, what are you all sharing with the small business trends audience? I know reviews and comments are important. What is your kind of one-on-one of how to get them? What should we do with them? Any thoughts on this whole aspect of reviews and comments and et cetera? So I won't purport to be the, um, the expert on getting reviews. Um, probably Rev knows more about that than I do. One thing I will say is nothing causes more angst among small business owners who get a bad review or this fear of a bad review. And we get, whenever we write something like an article about, you know, um, how to, how to, you know, encourage more positive reviews and, you know, ditch your bad reviews or whatever. And people come over and they start sharing their stories and people feel helpless. So I would say this, they probably know even less than what Rev is suggesting people know about listings about reviews. People just don't know what to do. Uh, there's a very tiny percentage who figured it out and those who do do really well. And the rest are like, Helpless, what do we do? They, they're really looking for guidance. Yeah, absolutely. Rev, so drop some science on us. Let's spend a few minutes on reviews because they're important. I mean, for me, Rev, the only thing that's important to me is, is my hair nice? That's all I care about for my personal reviews. But for businesses who are not Ramon, what do you tell us? What are the top things we need to do to get reviews, which I'm guessing are important. I'm just extrapolating here. And then I guess we need to share the reviews with others. Another thing I'm sure that's important is if we get a bad review, but you're a smart guy, help us understand reviews. What do we need to know? Cool. Well, I, I solved the hair problem by always wearing a hat. So if, 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 if your reviews start to like get super negative on that, oh, you can always go to hat style. So uh, anyway, so, so let, let's break this down in the way that, that Google sees it, right? Because I, I think it's easier for people to understand how, where Google's places reviews and then we kind of break that down. So Google determines local search with three factors, okay? Um, and, it, and the first is relevance, right? And so relevance means like if you type in, you know, best hairdresser near me, right? You've told them best, so you want 4.0 or higher. You said hairdresser, so that's the type of business they're looking for, right? And then near me is whatever geographic or if you put a city name, something like that. That's, that's relevance, right? Distance then is, again, what's the geographic? Did you say, you know, best hamburger Atlanta or, you know, something near me, whatever. So now they're trying to figure out where you are, right? And then the last, and this is kind of newish, in April of 2016, Google put this out there and said, the third factor in ranking for search is prominence. Um, and that's really fancy one word way of saying recent positive ratings and reviews, right? So the example I like to give is if you have a pizza shop here and a pizza shop here and you know, you're standing in the middle and you search best pizza place near me, right? If this place has a review from a week ago and this has a review from yesterday, this will be the one that comes up. You see what I'm saying? So Google rewards you for recent ratings and reviews. Now, the, the supersized version of that, right? When you wanna go from like, you know, a coffee to like a package of 10 hour energy uh, for local location marketing is actually first party reviews. And to break that down real quick, something like Yelp, Google, uh, Yelp, Google, Bing, Foursquare, all that, those are third parties. Those, those are reviews that live on somebody else's website, but talk about your business. You can actually curate your reviews on your own business website. That's called a first party review and Google along with all the other search engines will actually like super juice your listing. If you're getting real authentic reviews from your customers, right? So you have to manage them. You have to generate them. You have to have them. Um, and you should be replying whether it's negative, whether it's a one star, two star, three star, four star, five star, or, you know, whatever crazy rating system that the publishers that are important to your business you have to go out there that that should be a part of your daily or weekly sort of marketing cadence because like when i say it is the super juice of search it is like when they injected steve rogers with the serum that turned him into captain america that is what reviews are for search i love it that sounds like a third t-shirt to me um <laughs> We have a whole line after this. <laughs> Serious, Rev. Um, and then as we, we, we got a few minutes left here, and I want to save some time for you and Anita to talk really about what are some of the things that the small business trends audience will see that Yext is doing. But before we get there, um, um, Rev, help me understand just without Yext, we know Yext has all these solutions for small businesses. But if I'm not using Yext, how do I let Google know that I have a review? Meaning if I put the word reviews and I put 
three of my customer reviews? Does Google just see that? And if it's too technical, we don't want to go deep into it, but is there a way that you can share with us how that works? And I, I'm sure, again, Yext has tools, but if I'm not using Yext, what can I edit on my website if, if that's doable? Are you saying for, for first party? Uh, first party, yes. Uh -huh. yeah, there, so there's a number of options out there. You could just go, you know, you can Google search for, you know, first party reviews or reviews for my business. And there, there's a number of different tools out there you can use for it. But there are tools you need to use. I wasn't sure if you could just put on your website and put a review. It's not just a simple. No, you know, there are, you have to use a third party tool. Um, there are some rules that the internet in general sort of sees. Um, you know, like the same type of thing that Yelp would say, you know, you can't like reward somebody for a review. You can't punish somebody for a review. You can't generate false, for, you know, like if Ramon, you start a business and ask Anita and I to go like start up an account and post for you. Like, uh, it's not, it's, there, there are rules to engagement that make it work, but you do, you do need a tool. You do need a tool to do it. Got it. One more question I have, and Anita, I'm going to, you know, we're coming to the downslip of our interview, but we have time. If there's questions, Anita, we have, feel free to share that now, or you had some more things, maybe I didn't express. I'll turn the floor to you. Uh, but one thing I have, uh, Rev, to ask you about, you know, I, again, I'm in the New York City area. You go to the pizza shop, they have these germ-filled, slimy uh, fish bowl things. You drop your card in, you've got some grease-filled sign. Did you like? Can you please, if you have, Rev, any advice, and I, seriously, how can local businesses get reviews? Anything at the top of your head, you know, that you can say, hey, here's how to start collecting some good reviews. We know that, that there's tools out there to display them. Got it now, Yext and many others that help you manage it. But how do you ask, how do you get, what should we be doing? Sure, so that's a great question. Um, how do you get reviews? There, there's definitely some very distinct rules about what's frowned upon and what's not frowned on, upon. Um, but you can kind of ask for them without, you can't say, you know, give us a five-star review. You can say, hey, if you had a good time, here's a review site we use, right? That's a good way to do it. Or another thing that you can do that I actually think is a really smart move is if you get a review that's really glowing or fun or like they had a good experience, you can share a link to that review on your social, right? So if somebody's like, oh my God, I had the best time ever. Uh, you know, our server did this and this and this, like give that person a thank you. They're going to feel good about it. That, By the way, that's called customer service. But sharing that, tells people that these things are important to you, right? You can also say, hey, you know, Facebook update today. Hey, reviews are super really important to our business. We like Facebook, Google, and Yelp. Like, again, you haven't asked for a review, but you've sort of let that be known, right? Um, and I'll tell you this, I used to own a, a bar restaurant in New York City, and we had three and a half stars, and I couldn't figure out like what we were doing wrong, and I couldn't figure out how to make the difference there, but I read that, uh, Every half star on Yelp is worth five to nine percent in business, and I was like, "Oh, we could use five to nine percent of business. We could actually use twenty, but we'll start with five. And so we actually did table touches every single customer, every single time. Walk to the table. Did you have a five star experience? No. What could we do right now to make that better? Right. And if my dry cleaner said that to me, I would answer. But you know, the pro shop, whatever. And we would just go do that thing right there. And then we would come back like, okay, did you have a five-star experience now? They would say, yes. We go, cool. Well, if you're on Yelp or Foursquare, Facebook, Google, whatever was important, we're there too. And within three months, we actually went up a half star, saw a spike in business, and then went up another half star again. So, I mean, you can sort of ask without asking, you know. I love it. So your business is so successful. You're now at Yes. This is amazing. And I must say, uh, Rev, I do the same thing is that, you know, I'm a speaker, as you both know, I'm more so my product. And even in speaking, I go to the audience beforehand, shake hands. How are you? My name is Ramon. What's your name? Thanks for being here. So listen, I think this has been great. And I'm sure Anita may have some more to add to it, but this has been a great discussion. And I'm going to step back, Anita, for half a second and turn this to you to talk about the relationship. I think Yext and small business friends are going to have and maybe some things you wanted to ask uh, as well, Anita. Well, I just want to say, uh, first of all, thanks to Rev. You, this has been awesome. And we got some really great uh, advice here. And I'll tell you what, this is just a taste of what's to come. So we're delighted to enter into this relationship with uh, Yext and, and have actually Rev here speaking himself. I love the way, Rev, you're so plain spoken. You get right to the point. I mean, there's no hemming and awing here. It's just, here's what you need to do. Here's what you should worry about. And, and that's what people want. So we're delighted about that. And uh, I, you know, I just encourage people to come on over. We'll be sharing uh, Rev's content, but Rev is all fired up. He's already writing content and, and it's all gonna be very, very useful stuff. So with that, I pass it over to Rev. 
All right. Well, listen, I'm really excited. Um, you know, somebody asked me the other day, what gets you excited in life? And I was like, well, burgers. And they're like, well, okay, what else? And I was like, oh, being a dad. Okay, what else? I was like, oh, helping other people in business. So like th this sort of hits into what I'm really, really excited about. And just to give some context to the audience. Um, so at, at Yex, we work with everything from small business to agencies that help small businesses up to gigantic um, you know, huge chains and, and fortune 500 companies. So we actually kind of see the whole landscape of location based businesses. And part of my job is I get to dip into all those conversations and see what's working for everybody. And that sort of helps me distill back down to the small business owners. Hey, here's sort of best practices to go from here to here to here. And we need to hear how to stay up here. Um, so a lot of that also background, I, like I said, I used to own a bar restaurant in New York city. So I understand being a small business owner in literally the worst market that there is for competition. Um, I joke all the time. There were six places to get a beer on the block of my bar, probably why we're not in business anymore. Um, but I also, I also used to own an agency where I help small business marketing. So it's sort of my background, location-based marketing, small businesses, uh, definitely sort of lean a little bit towards hospitality, which to me just says, I understand customer service in a face-to-face -face challenge. Um, but look, I'm really, really excited about this. I hope that, you know, we can really just, I want to help people. I want to help you with your business. Um, you know, I want to help people understand how to modernize their business in a couple minutes a day online and, and how to just, you know, it really comes down to, I believe the customer service journey starts before they've ever heard your name. Right. And if you can control the path from the minute they think about what they need that you solve to the minute they leave your door, that is the true path to success. So with that, this has been a great event. This is the Facebook live event brought to you by small business trends. This is about one big shh secret to local marketing. I'm remote with smart hustle. We've talked to Rev who's with Yex and my friend Anita Campbell with small business trends.